take a walk through the woods of Marlboro. I'm Priscilla Ryder. I'm the Conservation and Sustainability Officer for the City of Marlboro. And with me is Karen Paquin. And I'm on the Conservation Commission in Marlboro and I lead the Trails Committee in Marlboro. And she does a fabulous job. We have a great partnership and we wouldn't have all these trails without Karen and her intrepid team, crew. The team yeah. and Priscilla. So today <laughs> and... we would like to give you a sneak peek of all the parcels of properties that the city has that have trails and um, all the outdoor resources that um, the city has that's uh, conservation related. And we want to give you a quick tour. Uh, the, often I get a comments that people had no idea we had. They, they knew Galoni Park and maybe they knew the desert, but they didn't know any of the other properties. So uh, today we'll give you a quick um, tour of all of our properties. The map that's, on, that's up here um, shows uh, 15 properties um, that we do have trails on and that trails that the Conservation Commission and the Trails Committee have been working to keep maintained and opened and um, ready for people to explore. So the first property that the city acquired in the 60s was the Felton Conservation Land. It's an old farm. It still has a uh, for three fields and a big swamp on it, and it's a great property. It also happens to in, be the intersection of our Panther Trail and the Burroughs Loop Trail, which we'll talk about in a little bit. Um, but it's a beautiful place for birding and uh, the kinds of things that you will see. The elusive fisher cat, uh, which you hardly ever see, but they're, they're around, and the foxes definitely roam that field, and the deer do, and the turkeys do, and, but it's, it's one of the uh, best places to go birding. If you are an avid birder, um, a lot of the songbirds and, and the like go through this property, so it's a great place to go um, uh, bird watch. Yeah, and I think then, this is our great crested flycatcher, right. one of the many sightings you'll see on eBird because so many folks uh, register their sightings on that site. And then the next property um, we wanted to introduce you to is the second piece of conservation land that the city um, got in the early early days. And it's right next to the high school. And it um, it's a property that, uh, it's pretty small, but it does have a pond on it. The school uses it in their biology classes. And uh, it has a nice trail system that goes to the woods and um, it gets well used and well loved. And so it has, a, again, the nice pond that has lots of frogs in it. So if you have little kids who mm -hmm. want to go look for frogs, that's a great place to go. And then it has some nice boardwalks and bridges um, and, and little streams that, that it crosses. And here we are at the Desert Natural Area in Marlboro, and that is the city's largest parcel, uh, along with the city piece and the the state's DCR piece and the Sudbury Valley Trustees, which is the regional land trust, their piece and the town of Sudbury, we're talking about 600 acres. And then if you go north, it also is right next to the Assabet uh, River National Wildlife Refuge, which is about another 2,000 acres. So you can imagine that there are miles and miles of trails on these properties. Um, it's also a very special place because it has what's called the pitch pine scrub oak forest, which is not only rare in our area and in our nation, but it's globally rare. And um, that's there. We also have uh, cold water streams on the property and we have vernal pools on the property. And it's just an absolutely gorgeous place to um, visit. And here are some pictures. It's beautiful any time of year. Uh, you can cross country ski, you can take your dog, you can, as, as you see from the middle picture, it's absolutely spectacular in the fall with all of the birch and, and other trees that have yellow leaves. <laughs> uh, it's a really beautiful place. And what we've been trying to do along with the Sudbury Valley Trustees and our other partners is we've been trying to maintain that forest. So we actually had a managed burn in 2014, I believe it is. Um, and we burned 14 acres of land to get rid of fuel and to get out the trees that, that really don't belong there. Uh, and so this is a picture of the first day after the fire. I mean, it was just totally burnt in a managed way. Um, and then we can see about a month later, nature is already taking over with the grasses and all sorts of um, smaller uh, plants have, have come in. 
and then we can see about three months later. And if you look today, there are trees and all, I mean, it, you can't even tell there was a burn there, but it's very important to, to keep our forests healthy. And we've continued to go back, not with a burn, but with, with other techniques, taking out trees to make sure we maintain this property. And one of the reasons we do this is because there are some very um, special creatures that are in that forest that really can't be found in a lot of other forests. There is the frosted elfin, which is extremely rare, except in places like this. The whippoorwill, which we used to hear all the time, we don't hear very much anymore. Um, we're hoping to hear it back in the forest now that we've been managing the land. Um, all kinds of, you, you recognize the monarch and, and we've got barred owls. They're just a lot of beautiful animals in that, in that forest. And here are a couple of pictures of our vernal pools. We have probably at least four. I think it's six or seven. Or, yeah, or maybe yeah, six or yeah. seven total vernal pools. Wonderful places, um, uh, very special places where uh, certain creatures, spotted salamanders, things like that, they can't survive without them. So in this habitat there are, and other properties in the city, there are these vernal pools that are very important. And the reason this that property is called the desert is because it is uh, it is very sandy and it, it was never really developed and it's 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 reminiscent of the Cape because in a lot of it wasn't really good farmland or anything so it wasn't really developed so it was called the desert because it was very sandy and again because of that unique habitat it, it's growing plants that only grow down on the Cape or down um, yeah. on the South Shore and and again, it was the state who said to us, this is really unique, you gotta do, you know, you've gotta protect it as best you can. And it is a fire dependent species, so, or, or landscape, so that it needs fire in order for those trees to rejuvenate and for the, the seeds to be able to reset, et cetera. So that's, um, that's, exact, that's why we're working with the state and a bunch of other people to, um, to get funds to help us re, um, maintain this habitat. A special place, yeah. Mm -hmm. And then uh, Mount Ward, which is a beautiful property with quite a hill on it. Um, and, and there's a nice trail that, that goes through there. It's connected to a neighborhood off of Langelier Drive. So, but, but anyone can come and, and walk these trails on Mount Ward. And at the top is this amazing maple tree. I believe it's a maple. Um, that I don't know how old it is, but it is huge and huge and glorious. It's a very lovely tree. So really nice trails up at Mount Ward. And then the the another spot that we that I particularly love is Cider Knoll, which is off of um, of Stow Road. But it's it, you can get there's four different entrances to it: two on Stow Road, one on um, Woodland Drive, and one on Hutchinson Drive. But it's a, about 100 acres of property that um, has a, a, a really beautiful pond. The beavers have been very active there over the last couple of years. It has a nice stream going down. It has some elevation overlooked areas that are beautiful. Uh, it has some outcroppings of rocks. Um, it's, and it, it's just full of wildlife. And um, uh, it, it does connect through with our Burroughs Trail. So it is, this is a most probably one of our most unique and diverse properties. Um, and I think we have some pictures. Some, we do. Uh, pictures, some beautiful pictures of the boardwalk that we built um, that, that connects that to Galoni Park. And uh, this is, a, the benches are there. And then the beavers are very active. And uh, the bottom left picture is their beaver dam and um, the pond in the spring. This is also a great place to bird. At Cider Knoll, we also have our community garden. Um, and the goats have been helping us take care of some of our invasive plants. So they were there most of the summer. Um, and then at the top right is, is the beaver is lodge. Is the beaver lodge, correct, finally. Correct. So, and this, again, this is a, a really lovely property that has a lot of diversity and um, a lot of people enjoy it. Yeah, some of the creatures. So, uh, so there's the, the beaver, obviously, is very active there. The woodcock. Um, we haven't seen the woodcock there recently, but um, I think in the past it, it's there. It likes it likes field edges, um, so we do have some fields there. The uh, great blue heron, and then the um, wood duck, and then obviously there's a couple of vernal pools on this one too. And the in the spring you may see the salamander, which is the yellow spotted salamander that's uh, 
crawling there. And then um, not too common, but not completely rare is the spotted turtle and then just a tree frog. And you'll, you can, once you learn all the, the, the bird sounds and the um, animal sounds, when you walk in the woods, you can say, oh, the tree frogs have come up. Oh, it's a such it's a, a wonderful woodpecker. <laughs> so it's it's wonderful once you get out, and uh, we will be leading walks and trying to get people interested and and know and knowledgeable about what's out there. So so Lake Williams so behind the courthouse and the fields off of Lake Williams on and Lazat Drive. Um, we do have this is our watershed land, and we do have a trail system that goes through there. Um, the good news, and this is a beautiful property, and it has, uh, it's not, it's maybe a mile long, so it's a nice little walk. It's right in the middle of town. Um, Lake Williams uh, is, you know, you can see it from when you come off of 290 on, on Route 20. Um, the, the exciting news is that um, the city was, has agreed to, and, and has gotten permits to put in a, a floating boardwalk that will create a loop so this whole trail will now um, you'll walk on the land and then you'll walk over the water and um, we're hoping to see that uh, finished hopefully by this fall or next spring. Stay tuned. <laughs> yes and I think we have some pictures of Lake Williams. I mean there's some beautiful we have a nice little boardwalk we have a nice trail it, you you can see the, the the lake on some areas some of the woods are thick and some of them are thin, and, and you also get a little bit of a height um, when you come around uh, towards the, the highway. So it's, a, it's a, actually a very gorgeous parcel as well. Very peaceful place. Yes. Yeah. Jericho Hill is the old ski area in Marlboro, and it has quite a complicated um, and very hilly <laughs> trail system. So if you're up for a little bit of a challenge, this is a great place to go. And you can either walk up the side of the hill and, and just walk in the sunshine and get to the top for a beautiful view. An excellent view, cardio. An excellent <laughs> cardio and a view of Shoestring Hill, right, right mm -hmm. across the way. Mm -hmm. um, or you can go internally and take the trail system. And especially as you come down toward um, the little brook, it's, it's just so lovely and peaceful. It's a dark forest uh, and, and the burbling brook. It's, it's just absolutely lovely. No matter how you get to the top, it's really beautiful. <laughs> so there have been bobcat sightings, quite a number of them, right around Jericho Hill, not necessarily in the wooded area. They seem to like the edges. So um, we've gotten photos from folks that tell us they've seen the bobcat. It's there. Um, the trails team has also been busy because some of the structures at uh, Jericho Hill, some of the steeper areas that had um, little stairways like this uh, needed to be replaced. So that's a picture of the newest stairway that is replaced. Um, and on the right, you see a picture of the ski hill. If you look at the top of the hill, you will see some of the infrastructure that used to be there for the tow. Uh, it's, it's kind of hidden in the, in the woods, but you can see it. It's a little overgrown, but it's there. And so. if people haven't explored it in the winter, it's the best sledding area. Sledding ever. It's quite fast, <laughs> yeah. And Sheep Brook Falls is special because it comes right off of the Assabet River Rail Trail. So you can enter it on two different places on the Aspet River Rail Trail, and then you go through this lovely wooded area. So you have a little bit of pavement if you want, and then you can get off and, and take a walk around the Boston Scientific Complex. Um, I don't know how long it is. It's probably at least a mile and a half of trail. So it's lovely. I'm sure it gets a lot of use by the uh, Boston Scientific folks as well. And the Grove Conservation Land, which is off of Bolton Street and along the Fort Meadow Reservoir. Um, as you can imagine, gorgeous views of the reservoir. Um, there's a little beach area that seems to be very popular with the dogs. <laughs> um, and there will be, there has been in the past a canoe and kayak launch, uh, but there will be a new one that will be more accessible. So this property um, has had some alterations to make it more accessible. The, the mm -hmm. ramp that goes up to the um, canoe launch uh, and highly recommended. It's just, just a beautiful property. I off think the we main have some road. Great pictures and I think too. we have some yeah. great pictures. So there's the burbling brook and the, the view of Fort Meadow and a skunk cabbage. It's yeah. very red. 
It's yes, very it's a, it's rich. A, it's the first flower of spring, <laughs> yeah. and when you see that, you know spring has sprung. It's Absolutely. great. Absolutely. It's, it's beautiful and great kayaking on, the, on Fort Meadow Reservoir, of course. Mm -hmm. And I think you're. And up then for Galoni Park. Most most everybody knows about Galoni Park and that um, and the big fields and and the track area and the 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 trail that goes up and around uh, above the track that that's, goes through the woods that's paved. So that's the that's the part that most people know. And then on the east side, there's a huge amount of property that belongs to the state as well as to the city, and we've over the years been able to patch together um, this green quarter and as uh, we have quite a, a lovely trail system in there and it's uh, it goes from being very flat to having a few hills and and sort of sort of some uh, outcrops of rocks that are beautiful and then when you get down to Hemingway Street there's a uh, it, it's sort of a it's very swampy and has um, some pretty unique uh, habitats there so and some vernal pools in here as well so that's right it's um it's so if you've if you've only explored one part of Galoni Park there's this whole other area to look at which is just uh, it's a it's a great place to explore and you'll notice the three ponds so the pond that is the most westerly let's say um, right above that along the track we have a new pollinator garden and we'll be talking about that a, in a few slides, um, but there is a new uh, native pollination garden there. And you'll see all kinds of things. There's boardwalks, there's just regular woods trails, and then a portion of, of the trail is paved that's, that's above Galoni Park, uh, the track. So there's quite a diversity of trail surfaces and also of trail um, locations. When we were doing the uh, Panther Trail, which we'll talk about in a second, uh, we were connecting a bunch of open spaces. So the brand new maps that uh, are in production right now, uh, which will soon be loaded onto our website, uh, is Indian Hill, uh, which is down. So if you go to Target on, um, on the Sudbury Line side, uh, you look up the hill. That, that has been protected and is now conservation land, and it does connect um, kind of the area from Route 20 to, to Callahan State Park, which is also a big regional uh, asset for the city. And then the Sudbury Reservoir, um, we were able to get permission from the state to develop a trail, which started a while ago, but we've made it now all the connections and tried to make all the, all the bridges. There's a few that we still need to build, but on low water where you can go across it and High water, you kind of turn around. You have to swim. <laughs> you have to swim it. <laughs> um, in the Howe Pond and Flag Swamp area, which are up to the top left of the of the plan, um, are again connections that we had conservation land that we were able to connect the trails through. So, those are the, our newest trails, and again, the trails committee and Boy Scouts and mm. um, and volunteers have helped us put those together and make make this loop all together. The building in the in the middle next to that P is is Target, and and so there's a parking area next to that that you can go up the hill, behind some homes, and then into Callahan State Park. So we have an easement to, to allow that. And here's another cardio event. <laughs> it's, yes, yes, it's, it's quite a, good, a big it's hill, a good hill that yes. you're you're climbing yeah. up. <laughs> yeah. And then the um, Flag Swamp is also it's it, as it's as it's named. It's has it's quite a good has a good swamp in it, but it's um, the headwaters to uh, Fort Meadow Reservoir. It is also a cold water fishery. It's very, it's sort of a very important um, area and the trail kind of winds you through and up and around some of those wet areas that are, that are high value habitat. How Pond is the, the blue um, blob at the bottom, but um, <laughs> the trail connection from Doucette Drive to Berlin Road goes through and again, there's an up and down through wet, some wetlands and some pretty unique kind of um, land masses. Uh, again, some huge, nice outcroppings of, of, of rocks that are, that are kind of unique. And, and when you come upon them, you're like, oh, wow, this is so beautiful. So, Great habitat, probably yeah, yeah. coyotes or foxes yeah, or something yeah. living in Somebody there. Somebody loves to live there. And, and this map reminds me especially how fortunate we are 
you see how densely populated there's there's commercial there's residential and yet we have these pockets of green space which mm -hmm. are just we're so fortunate and as i mentioned the Sudbury reservoir um, connects from it connects callahan state park um, over to uh, framingham road so it's a it's a long and again it it, it goes up and around all of the inlets and outlets of the of the Sudbury Reservoir and it's it's quite it's 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 worth the it's worth the walk even if you can only do a, a small section it's definitely worth to worth it to get to the water's edge and take a look and there are places you can come in and out of so you can you can get out uh, near Helen Drive you don't have to commit to the whole yes <laughs> to right. the whole length our trails crew has been very diligent in making uh, stairs and Boy Scouts have been doing our boardwalk. So any place that was low and wet that or, or tripping hazard or whatever now has sort of good footing so that you can you can get through. So it's if, if you're a runner, this is a great run. Mm. If you're a if you're a hiker or a birder, it's also a great place to go. Yeah, and that particular Boy Scout built four of the bridges along that yeah. section yeah. <laughs> as part of his Eagle project. So a lot, a lot of help from the Boy Scouts. And I guess I, we wanted to make sure that you knew that there's so much more. Yeah. I mean, we, we are very, very, very lucky in Marlboro that we have surrounding properties or, and surrounding towns that also have open spaces that kind of expand our, our treasures, right? So we have the Burroughs Loop Trail, which was open in 2019. Mm -hmm. um, it's a 33-mile trail that connects uh, Marlboro to Southboro to Westboro to Northboro and back into Marlboro. So it's a four four town boroughs loop, um, and a lot of people have been challenged challenging themselves to do it in one day, two days, five days. You know, do a section every weekend. It's been it's been great, and uh, people have enjoyed that. And it comes it goes through some of the Sudbury Reservoir um, uh, uh, channels that are some of its mode and it's beautiful and it's and then it goes to woodlands I mean you you can't imagine the diversity of that trail it's lovely uh, the panther trail is a 26.2 mile trail that goes through just Marlboro and uh, I, I, I'll show you again the map we have the Assabet River Rail Trail that goes from Marlboro to Acton uh, the section in Stowe is still to be connected but mm -hmm. soon hopefully the Aspet River is, you know, uh, comes across near where the mall is on Dolinch Boulevard, and um, uh, there's two canoe launch locations in Marlboro, and you can get to the dam in Hudson and take out there. You can port portage around it and go to keep going down to Maynard and mm. um, and eventually to Concord. And if you're really adventurous, goes to the Merrimack <laughs> River, and you can get to the ocean that way. So that's a, a ride. long way. <laughs> The other cool thing, if you're really into long trails, is the Bay Circuit Trail um, is a 230-mile trail that starts in the North Shore in Ipswich and ends and comes. We're the, the the farthest circle on the outside of that, and then it ends up in Kingston um, on the South Shore. So uh, we're kind of very fortunate that that just clips Marlboro and in the Sudbury Reservoir area location, which is very fun. The Assabet River Wildlife Refuge that Karen had mentioned is um, next to our desert property, and that's another 2,000 acres. And then we're fortunate to have Callahan State Park, which is Marlboro, Framingham, and Southboro. There is a map online if you go to the city's website um, and to go to conservation and look at trails, and all the trails are listed there, and all the maps are available at that location. We also have kiosks on most of our trail entrances that have a map on them. We'll be updating most of those um, in the next month or two, and um, and that'll tell you where you are. And you'll also notice, um, and we'll point it out with the Panther Trail as well, that you can tell which trails you're on from the um, trail signage. So that's the Burroughs Loop trail sign. So if you're, you're trying to keep onto that trail, you'll be looking for, for those signs. Panther has the orange diamond with, uh, with paws on it, Panther paws. And if you'll see this map, the top, it, it's, it's uh, dashed blue and yellow, which means it's both the panther and the burrows. And then where it's just blue, that's just panther trail.
And where it's just yellow, it's just Burroughs Trail. And there's so, also a lovely um, trail that connects from the Assabet River Rail Trail and goes down into the center of town. And it basically um, creates two 13 point, what is it? So 26.2, so 13.1, like, yeah. 13.1 yeah. um, yeah. uh, mile trails in case anyone wants to do a Half marathon. <laughs> yeah. We do lead walks and we're trying to, we've got a, quite a few people who are helping, willing to help us um, lead them. And usually when we advertise and we get 15 to 20 people per walk, so it's great. And people want to get out and understand where these trails are. So we're hoping to do more of that. We're recruiting people who want to lead walks, who love the woods as well. The AMC led a hike in 2019, shortly after the the boroughs open, they, they let a hike through um, our property. So the word is out. <laughs> and these are just some organizations that have been helping, you know, so the, the, the river, ORS is an organization for the Sudbury, Assabet, and Concord Rivers, and they've been doing quite a bit of work on just making sure there's a trail map that's a, the river trail map. So uh, that is available, and I have a link to that online as well. And then the Assabet River Rail Trail group is very good advocate about the, the rail trail, and they've been helping us to, you know, they, each community uh, protects, uh, you know, maintains their own, but um, it's great to have a group that kind of keeps an eye on it and is an advocate. We have this absolutely wonderful group of folks, volunteers. Um, we're up to about 51 people, I believe, um, and they are our trail crew. So we have a formal uh, trail day. It is the third Saturday of every month throughout the year. In fact, we're happier to work in the winter than we are in the summer. Um, and usually about a dozen people come to each of those. We have some folks who just report wherever they're walking and, and that is so valuable. You know, they say, oh, we walked here, it's grown in, or a tree is down, or, you know, something's happened to the bench, or very critical work. We have some folks who adopt a property and say, I will be the steward of Cider Knoll or the desert or house. Um, all of these very important. And we do a lot of trail clearing, as you might imagine. Um, I can tell you a little tale of the Sudbury Reservoir Trail. Uh, we needed to take down, or take out, I should say, nobody took down any trees, but we needed to take out 83 trees off the trail. That so had many had fallen mm -hmm. because um, it had been some time, there had been a lot of store, uh, storms rather, and that's how many trees had to come off the trails before the trail could really go through in you know a user-friendly way. So we have a couple of chainsaw experts that uh, do that. We have um, some volunteers who have very fancy equipment and make the kind of sign that you see in the middle there, that's uh, the carved version of, of the Burroughs Loop Trail. Um, we have folks who make kiosks, we do bridges, um, it's all kind of stuff, and it's so much fun. People are disappointed when we, when we have to cancel because of weather. They're like, oh, we wanted to do the work. We had um, a lot of help from the Carpenters Local to do the um, a, a couple of the more complicated engineered boardwalks. They came weekend after weekend to help us uh, build those. Um, again, we have lots and lots of help from the Boy Scouts. Um, it's, it's incredible, the Eagle Scout projects that um, have helped create these trails. We had to figure out how to level a trail in a way that would be sustainable so that it wouldn't just wash out the next rain storm and then we had to rebuild stairs that go up Indian Hill. As I said, it's rather steep. So um, that was part of the project. You can see how steep the trail is in the bottom right photo. We really had to do some work to get it, you know, get the tread a little <laughs> flatter. One of the Boy Scout projects, the, the big boardwalk at Cider Knoll or, or on the Panther Trail near Cider Knoll, needed to have uh, a bog bridge built, like a hundred and it's either 100 feet or 120 feet of bog bridge built to be able to even get to that um, bridge. The Boy Scouts did a lot of work. Our volunteers have done a lot of work to keep it clear because, as you know, things get overgrown very quickly, especially on a rainy, a rainy uh, season.
A lot of trail mapping and signage has had to happen. You know, as you can imagine, with 26 miles of trail, you've got to make sure people know where the trail is and how to stay on the trail. Um, we've had volunteers help us, first of all, ground truth the trail and then re uh, sign. sign it, I guess would be the best way to say it. We have some, uh, a lot of volunteers who know how to use mobile mapping. And so whenever they see things, they send information right on the map um, to us so that we can deal with any issues that come up. We had to uh, move a bridge down um, over that stream uh, to help people get along Old Concord Road on that property. Uh, but you can see that there's some very sophisticated reporting going on from our volunteers uh, so that we can do this work efficiently. As I mentioned, at Galoni Park, near one of the ponds, uh, we have this pollination garden. The idea behind it is the plants are not only native to this region, but they are very specifically designed for certain uh, pollinators that have been having a hard time, that have not been able to find the resources they need uh, to feed their young and to have the next generation. So there is this um, pollinator garden that went in last year, I believe. And this year, <laughs> you can see from the middle photo, uh, we have some unruly thistles that um, have taken over. They've been since taken out, but it's a beautiful garden. Uh, we've had a couple of garden tours where we're trying to tell the public about these wonderful um, plants and their pollinators. Uh, this was uh, a project that was done by two uh, Girl Scouts who were getting their silver award. So we've had a lot of Girl Scout help as well. Um, the really great thing about this garden is people are always hearing about all the the creatures that we're losing and the biodiversity that we're losing and you feel a little bit helpless. The idea behind this garden is not only to educate people but to, to show people that this is something you can do in your own backyard. It doesn't take much, doesn't take many plants and all of a sudden you're going to see all these butterflies and bees and hummingbirds and um, it's really very gratifying when, when you see nature come back into harmony. So these are some of the pictures that we've taken. The spice bush swallowtail, the um, eastern tiger swallowtail in the top left. A little bunny took refuge. He, he thought it was a great place to sort of hide mm -hmm. under the thistles. Um, I hummingbird. think I have a hummingbird. It's not a very good picture, but a hummingbird was really having a good time with them with the bee balm. And then that's um, one of our native bumblebees that we're trying to, um, I don't believe that's one of the rare ones, but we're trying to attract bumblebees and butterflies and birds and good pollinators. The other thing that the conservation department does is educate people about invasive plants. And this is so important. Um, it, it's really the other half of the puzzle. You know, if you've got these non-native plants that are taking over all of our natives, there's no food or resource in these plants. And they basically, many of them will kill our native trees, like Oriental Bittersweet will kill our native trees. And um, this is another place that folks can not only come out and help us do the work on the trails. We've had, we've had AMSA out there. We've had various companies have teams that come out and help us at Felton. Um, but you can do this in your own home, in your own space, where whatever your space is, you can recognize these things. We're happy to train you, and, um, and then you can take them out of your, your own spaces. And we have a lot of them. We mm -hmm. have a lot of invasive mm -hmm. plants, unfortunately. And the unfortunate thing is once you learn oh, what my these goodness. plants are, you, you walk you through the woods see and you it. say, oh, no, <laughs> I thought this was beautiful woods, and now I know it's all invaded. But... But it's okay that we're, the idea is to where there are small invasions of these non-native plants that we should encourage people to just pull them out so that we yeah. can, um, so the native plants can survive. The other thing that the city does provide is a community garden. We have 42 garden plots and um, residents can rent them for the year and um, some of them come back. So some of them, half of them are, are a 10 by 20 in size and some of feet and some are 10 by 10. So, um, and we have quite a good community there that's uh, been growing vegetables for a long time. And, um, but every year we kind of have a turnover about half. So if you're interested in gardening and you don't have the space on your own property, um, 
give us a call. <laughs> I hope that wets your whistle. I hope there's, there are quite a few properties that we didn't show you, uh, but once you start exploring them, we want you to go to get out and look. It's, you will be amazed that you are right outside the city or you, know, you, 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 you feel like you just came off of Main Street and then you, you're in the woods and you're hearing birds and, and frogs and crickets and you think, wow, this is so beautiful. So we encourage people to come out. If you have questions, we're happy to you know, let the Conservation Commission know. Yeah. We're always happy to direct you and if you wanna come and help us with any of our trail maintenance or join us on a walk so that you can explore, we are, opened arms and we would love you to join us. If you want more information or if you need to reach us, you can go to the city's webpage and uh, uh, choose boards and commissions and the Conservation Commission is listed there and you'll find our contact information there. Um, and the maps are also there. I'm Priscilla Ryder. I'm uh, obviously the Conservation Officer and you can reach me at City Hall. I'm on the basement floor. Um, my phone number is 508 Four six zero three seven six eight, or you can reach me by email. It's p writer, uh, so p r y d e r at Marlboro spelled all the way out r o u g h dash m a dot gov.